Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our MMA contrarian betting breakdown for today, uh, for tomorrow's card in Toronto. And again, for those of you that are here for the first time, this is not your normal, you know, who, who do I like and, and who do we think is going to win type video, or even who we think is just, I don't know, who, who we think you should be betting, sort of. What this is, is really... Um, a, a video designed to teach you how to be contrary, how to analyze markets in an intelligent way that will hopefully span not just you know through tonight's or tomorrow's MMA card, not only through all the MMA cards, but also to all sports betting, to all markets and whatever you whatever you like to invest in. Um, my my philosophy on these types of, of deals is that. The market is usually very, very efficient and is usually very, very liquid. And, and as a result, well, as a result, it's pretty efficient. Um, you have a whole bunch of, a lot of very, very smart people, a lot of money piling into these markets. And to be able to say that you have an edge in a market that has like a 40 cent line like this um, is, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's quite a, uh, it's, it's quite an egotistical jump to be able to do that. Now, I know people will say that they have an edge and a lot of that is based on, you know, survivorship bias and, and, and recency bias and things like that. But um, I'm going to go into the presumption that in markets like this and even markets like the stock market, it's very difficult to get a, a pure edge by just being smarter than everybody else. OK, uh, wh where it is possible to get an edge is to gauge how much of what is going into a line might be based on narrative. How much of what be what uh, might be going into a line is based on, you know, what people want to happen, and how much of what goes into a line is based on what story is the easiest one to tell. Because usually that's what human beings do. They will default to the not necessarily what's most likely to happen, but what is the easiest thing to justify um, happening. And what I found is that specifically in MMA, it's a it's a it's uniquely position to be a contrarian betting market because what happens is, is during the course of the week everybody just kind of feeds off each other and they pile on these narratives and they pile on these these takes and these pile on these these uh i don't know these stories about how a fight's going to go and by the end of the week you have a pretty decent consensus not necessarily on what's going to happen but at least the the public or the public or the betting market uh, settles on a very binary outcome. They will say, okay, either X is going to win this way or Y is going to win this way. And in a sport that's ripe with chaos, like, uh, like MMA, that is usually a recipe for disaster. Meaning that if you bet on the method of victory and the mode of victory and, and, and the path of least resistance or the path that's been agreed upon by the most number of people, uh, it's almost always the overvalued part, okay? Just because of the way this particular betting market works. So what we try to do is identify, you know, what that is, what the overwhelming consensus is, and then try to fade that. I mean, the idea is that if one thing is overvalued by a decent amount, then everything else is probably okay value. So that's the way we approach these things. And sometimes... We, we have huge weeks, sometimes we have terrible weeks, but that's really not the point, okay? The point of this is to learn how to think about markets in this way and how to apply that thinking on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully this is not too boring for you, or hopefully this is, even if it's not what you thought it would be, maybe you'll learn something from this. And hey, listen, if you're gonna watch the fights and you're gonna bet on them, if you really don't have an opinion anyway, um, you may as well be contrarian, you know, makes you, at least you learn something. Um, and I think it's healthy. I don't know I, I, if you're going to watch a fight to have something on it, you know, so have a little bit of fun with it. Um, I don't regard this type of thing as something where, okay, you know, you be contrarian, you put your bets in, you don't watch. And then you just, you know, the next day, see how you do ROI wise. I mean, that's no fun. I mean, I know a lot of people do that uh, in general, you know, a lot of the real professional wagers out there, they'll go ahead and, make all their bets and then they won't watch, they won't sweat. And the next day they'll say, oh, I made 6% or whatever it is. I mean, honestly, 
I'm not telling anybody what they do for a living, but that's no fun for me. So um, this is for people that, that number one, want to bet on the fights and want to get kind of a different look at it. And number two, just want to learn how to think about these things. Nonetheless, that is probably the most atrociously long introduction into this, but let's take a look at what's going on. So let's go over the rules. First of all, uh, again, I'm going to be betting something on every single fight, and that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care about that. Uh, also, I'm going to be betting one unit on every single fight, and that's also not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care about that either. And for me, one unit is going to be $180, 10 times high, lucky, very good. And the other thing, just to kind of make this fun, is that we're going to presume that the first, how many fights do we have, 12? We're going to presume that we're going to lose the first 11 fights so that the main event, we are going to make sure to bet something that you're getting at least 12 to 1, just so that you're never dead. And uh, uh, again, that's not the money, best money management system in the world either, but that's not the point of this. All right, let's get going. Um, the reason why we wait until Friday for this is because you want to wait as long as possible when you're a contrarian, in my opinion, because you really want to get a, a real sense of where the market is. And by the end of the week, you have a really, really good idea. All right. So Malcolm Gordon versus Jimmy Flick. So here we go. Right off the bat, this is not what you might expect from a contrarian approach, but this is the deal. Malcolm Gordon uh, opened up about a pick him here um, and got all kinds of money like really quickly, like lit earlier in the week. And essentially the last three or four days, if you go on to MMA Twitter and all the sharps and all the people that claim to know what they're talking about, you're going to see the exact same thing. Like, Oh my God, Malcolm Gordon minus 200 in this economy. Malcolm Gordon is completely untrustworthy at minus 200. Why on earth would anybody bet Malcolm Gordon at minus 200? Well, uh, this is lesson number one. Just because you're going to be contrary doesn't mean you have to put underdogs. So for me, uh, I, I, you know, I listen. I listen to the market. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't listen to the narratives. And if you have a hundred percent, basically, of all all gamblers saying that this line is too wide, but it moved there anyway, it's probably a lock. So we're going to take the Malcolm Gordon side of this. Um, we could just, from principle, just play the minus 200 because that's what people do. You know, that, that's the thing that people think is ridiculous, but let's take a look and see what else. Um, one thing actually I have seen is that Jimmy flick um, has no durability. Um, but I really haven't seen too much of the Malcolm Gordon, you know, which way he would win. So we're just going to, I guess we're just going to take Malcolm Gordon and lay the, lay the minus 200 just as, you know, just as an example of, of, of how to analyze these things. We don't almost ever bet favorites. Uh, we always find something else, but this is a perfect example of something that no one is playing, even though he's a minus 200 favorite. Anyways. Uh, and we'll, for 180, it would only win whatever, 86, $87 or whatever, but again, it's the principle. All right. Priscilla Cachuera against Jasmine Ju Joe's the Vicious. Um, so you have Jasmine Jazz the Vicious, who is a wrestler. She actually beat Miranda Maverick, who also is a wrestler. And Miranda Maverick took down Priscilla Cachuera at will and dominated her pillar to post and, and submitted her. Priscilla Cachuera has terrible takedown defense and does absolutely nothing off of her back. Um, and Jasmine Jazz the Vicious at home. There's literally no path to victory for Priscilla Cachuera, except maybe she gets like a knockout. Um, so we're going to be taking Priscilla Cachuera. Um, the, the, and the weird thing is, is that I was normally play her by knockout, but I have a feeling that almost everybody that's playing Priscilla Cachuera is actually playing her by knockout. Um so we're just going to take the plus 300 um, just in case she gets some random decision or, or something like that. Um, I don't, I don't want to lose um, uh, just because I got too greedy. So we'll play a play Priscilla Cachuera plus the 300 for one. All right. Uh, Johan Leines versus Sam Patterson. 
All right. So on the one hand, you have Sam Patterson, who is, you know, coming off a just a brutal KO loss, right? Just brutal. And on the other hand, you have Johan Leoness, who has uh, again, I'm just kind of repeating the, the 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 narratives here, where he used to be very aggressive. He's now just going to completely low volume. Um, so it, it probably rates to be a boring fight. So what you can't really do is play this fight to go the distance. You can't really play Leonez by decision because that's really what people are expecting in a way, you know? Um, Sam Patterson is kind of a tough guy to play um, just because how brutally he got knocked out. And and also what you're going to hear if you watch a lot of Twitter, this you know, watch a lot of MMA content, is that he's got that tall man defense whatever that means. Uh, it means he's tall. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, it, listen, he becomes more hittable that way. But, uh, and you're going to hear the Yola Hen Lioness is at home in Canada. So if it goes to decision, the judge is going to favor him. And yet the line is only like minus 140. I mean, who the hell is playing Sam Patterson here? So uh, we're going to try it. This is probably awful, but Sam Patterson Tall man defense for 180 on the road in Canada. Um, here's here we go again. Uh, Jillian Robertson against Pollyanna Vienna. Just a perfect stylistic matchup for Jillian Robertson, or so I am told. Um, she's going to, you know, she's a really good grappler. She likes to get on top, and and Pollyanna Vienna has no problem giving up her back and going for massive for submissions. There's just really very little that Pollyanna can do, you know, to separate really just random armbar. So in a weird way, like if you bet Pollyanna Vienna, um, there are people that are probably going to better by submission. Um, so what's left? You just got to play Pollyanna just plus the 245. You just have to. I don't see that many people that are doing that, literally, if at all. Um, I'm getting – there's so much – action coming in on this Jillian Robertson round two, Jillian Robertson by submission. I mean, those, those props just have to be atrociously done. They just have to be because everybody's playing them. So Holly and Vienna plus 240 for 180, another loser. Um, All right. Saidi versus Ramon Tavares. They just had this fight. Um, These guys fought each other. And interestingly, the fight was, Line pretty much the same. Uh, Saidi was minus 180, Tavares is plus 150, and uh, Saidi knocked uh, Tavares down. And as Tavares is trying to get his wits about him, the referee stopped the fight. And they said that the, you know they didn't think that was particularly fair, so they rebooked this fight. Um, uh, in a in a in a weird way. There's get there's actually a little more action coming in on the Tavares side. Um, I, this is what I've been hearing the last three days is that even though he got knocked down, he was actually doing really really well. And if in fact, when you think about it, like if in fact Tavares was, you know, uh, get knocked down and whatever he was getting out of there, why why would this line still be the same? People are really accepting the fact that if in fact the referee did not stop that fight or excuse me, if in fact the referee kept it going, that it would have been close to even. Um, I I don't know about that. So I'm actually going to take a weird contrarian stance and say that Saidi wins again, okay? Um, uh, I don't know if uh, there's no real lean on how he's going to finish. It, se- it seems like it would be too easy to just play him by KO again. So just for fun, what, what does society by submission look like? Society by submission plus 550. That is pretty interesting. But I don't know. In, in the name of uh in the name of uh what should we call it? Of just um of just being contrarian here without getting too fancy. Uh, we're just going to take Saidi minus the 180 here. That is that is 
And I will say this, that as, as far as fights go and contrarian stuff goes, this is one of the fights that I would probably pass if I were inclined to pass. Because I think people are not not that overwhelmingly on the Tavera side. I think that the Tavera side is the one that's most popular. Um, and I think that if you do play Saidi at minus 180, you're doing better than playing Taveras at plus 150. But I think the 30 cents is a lot to overcome here, uh, considering how close this this line probably is to reality. So uh, Saidi minus 180 for the purposes of this, um, but really, no, really nothing to do here. All right, um, Charles Jourdain or Jourdain versus Sean Woodson, local hero Charles Jourdain. Um, he is a good volume striker. He also showed some some submission chops in his last his last fight. Uh, Sean Woodson is basically more of a boxer, so we're expecting this fight to kind of be kind of played out at range, um, and. Uh, I guess if it's played out at range, Jordan being at home probably has the edge with the judges. So I imagine that's probably factored into the line some, uh, somewhat. So I think that what you're probably supposed to do is play Woodson uh, just plus the 170. Uh, and I, listen, that is pretty dangerous because if this fight does in fact go to decision, you are asking for it from the Canadian judges. But I have to think that that's sort of baked into the line. So we're just going to play Sean Woodson plus the 180. All right. Um, moving on, we have Brad Katona versus Garrett Armfield. Um, I, Brad Katona has been talked about like this this week, like he's the second coming of whatever. Okay. Um, he he. he had a reputation for being sort of boring. And then this last fight against Gibbs or one of his last fights, he put on, you know, they, they had a war. So he, he showed that he could be aggressive also. And here's the thing I hate. I mean, I hate betting on fighters that everybody claims has high fight. Okay. I think that that type of thing is just overvalued by the market. It's not something it's, 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 I don't say narrative based, but it really is. Um, Usually those types of things are very results oriented. Like if, if some if a fighter decides to not go for wrestling and they lose, then it was because of their fight IQ, for example. If they decided to go for wrestling and they won, it was because they had high fight IQ. Those things are really usually very results oriented, in my opinion. So whenever you have a guy who's getting like a little extra money because of his fight IQ, I, I tend to I tend to be suspicious. Most people that are analyzing this fight, uh, I would say 90% are on the Katona side. So just for no other reason, um, we're going to we're gonna play Armfield plus the 170. Now, here's something that, you know, I, I don't stress enough here. When I say that, you know, 90% of the people are on the, uh, are on the, uh, the Katona side, I don't even mean just straight up. I mean, even accounting for the line. You know what I mean? And that's what I, that's what, that's what I see, which is crazy every week. I mean, you have these plus 300 underdogs that not only are people not picking to win, you know, and you would think that if it were a three, uh, three to one underdog, that probably a third of the people or at least 25% of people would be picking them to win. But not only that, you don't even get that many people picking them even with the money line. So that's why, I mean, plays like this arm field just makes, just make a lot of sense to me. Um, just because again, uh, I would say literally 90% of picks out there, even with the money line, are on the uh, are on the Katona side. So we're going to go ahead and play Garrett Armfield plus the side. All right, so so far we haven't really gotten any, you know, big props or anything like that. You wonder why? Because we haven't had a fight yet where people have agreed in such force on how a fight is actually going to go. Um, and that's just the way this 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 card is set up. Mozart Ebluev versus Arnold Allen. All right, so this one we kind of know, right? So we have a grappler versus striker. People are on both sides of this, but people are very, very sure about what's going to happen. Either Ebluev is going to control him and win a board. Well, there are three ways, actually. Ebluev could either control him and win a kind of boring decision. Uh, number two, Allen could 
get a KO because he knocks people down. And Evelyn has been, you know, chin before. Um, or it's possible that in a, you know, in a striking based, excuse me, in a, in a, in a decision, maybe the Canadian judges don't really favor the, the, the takedowns as much and control time as much as kind of like the, 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 the swinging strikes. So maybe Allen gets kind of a greasy kind of split decision here. So with the only thing that's left, that's got a little bit of value is Evloev by finish. So that's what we're going to try here. Um, well, well, we're going to plot, try Evloev by finish. Um, let's take a look at some of the lines here. Uh, Evloev. This isn't right, is it? Evlo by submission is plus 900. Excuse me, it's plus 1,200? As opposed to TOKO plus 900? That's that's obscene, right? I, I, I don't know what that is, but we're, we're, let's, you know, let's, let's not even be fancy. Let's just, let's just play him inside the distance. So we're going to have winning method. Evloev either by TK or submit plus 550 inside. All right, now, now we're good. Evloev inside the distance plus 550. Let's go. All right, moving on. We have Chris Curtis versus Mark Andre Barrio. Um, all right. This is a pretty well agreed upon style. In other words, what people are expecting to happen is it's going to be a boxing. You know, and they're both strikers. Neither one of them are really going to go for takedowns. And I guess the only one I would think about going for takedowns is Barrio, but Chris Curtis is like 100% takedown defense, so that's not going to work. What's going to happen is that Barrio is going to be pressuring Curtis, and Curtis is going to be looking for counter punching. Okay. Um, and uh, it's going to take place on the feet. And the idea, I guess, is that. If Barry Old can keep that pressure going, you know, he maybe he can win a decision. Or if Chris Curtis can, you know, can keep him, you know, he can get that, uh, whatchamacallit, can get his counter punching going, he can get the KO. So I think Curtis by KO is, is probably being bet a little bit. Although, now I don't think Curtis by decision people believe because number one, he's lost, a, he's lost, uh, uh, a decision before to Hermanson. It's in Canada. And I think that with the pressure of Burial, Burial probably has the most decision equity. So you're probably not really getting too many people betting Curtis by decision. You're probably not getting too many people betting Burial inside the distance. So those are the two that we're going to try. We're going to try either Curtis by decision or Burial inside. But we'll just play whichever one's higher. And I know which one it's going to be already. Um, let's just see. Curtis by decision is only plus 140. Um, so Mark Andre Burial by TKO is plus 400. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't think he's going to, you know, have submission in it. You know, that, that, that's not what he's going to do. So we're going to play Mark Andre Burial by TKO plus 400. Um, Neil Magny against Mike Mallott. So at the very beginning of the week, it was basically all Mallott. Um, he's at home. He's Canadian, uh, the leader of the free world there. He's going to, he has a big, big advantage as far as age. Uh, he's got a big advantage as far as grappling. And he's going to take the, and he's got a big advantage as far as striking. He's going to take the guy out, put on a show for his home fans and submit him. And then slowly but surely during the week, you're hearing all the Neil Magny stuff, you know, how he's, he, he, he wears you down. He wears you against the fence. He creates kind of a boring fight. Um, and there's a little bit of steam coming in to Magny. Um, so Magny by decision, we're certainly not doing. And even Magny late, we're probably not doing. So those are a little bit overvalued for the underdog. I think Malat in round one is now becoming a little bit underappreciated um, just because again, you know, Magni can, Magni can be a pain in the neck. You know, he's got a lot of vet savvy. So I think Malat round one, probably a little bit of value. Um, 
or maybe round two. I think that's really the only way you could play this fight right now. Uh, let's take a look and see what some of these odds are. Not the best fight, by the way, as far as contrarian betting. I think that I don't think there's any real one way that people are agreeing this fight goes. Let's just take a look. Uh, Mallot, round one, well, TKO 500, submission 240. So this is what people are expecting to happen, I think. So why don't we do this? Let's let's just play him to win in round one in any old way. Let's just do it. Mallot, round one, plus 165. Oh, that seems like such a stupid sucker bet. Yeah, we're we're not going to do that. We'll go. We'll we'll go the rounds. We'll get rid of that. So mal out round two, I suppose. And again, uh, I'll stand by this because I said I was going to bet every fight, but this this is definitely a force. But uh, I'm actually going to be there, so we'll we'll root for this. Uh, mal out round two, uh, plus one eight. Oh, bad cardio too. I probably should just break my rule and not play that fight, honestly. But once you start breaking one rule, you start breaking the others. And, you know, it's, well, we'll donate the 180 here. All right, moving on. Mm, are we at the mains? Yeah. So we have the two five-round fights. And you have Maria Buena Silva, who... I don't want to say gets no respect or whatever, but I mean, all she does is just kill people nowadays. Uh, and I don't say she doesn't get any respect. I mean, she's the favorite and everything like that. But I was expecting her to be a bigger favorite. And in any case, uh, this is this is what this is what people are agreeing on. That Mary Bueno Silva um, doesn't really have the greatest striking in the world, but she has incredible submission skills. And she's probably going to, you know, not probably, but if she wins, she'll probably get Raquel Pennington out of there early, whether it be round one, round two submission. And if Raquel Pennington wins, it's going to be, um, you know, a grinding five round decision. So these are the things that we, or maybe Raquel Pennington gets there late. So we can't bet either of those things. We really can't bet Buena Silver early. Um, and we can't really bet Pennington late. So what we can do, I think, are three things. One is we could bet Mary Bueno Silva by decision. Or the other thing we could try uh, is Mario Bueno Silva by knockout. Uh, just the idea that her only path to victory is by submission. I mean, I've seen that she has some pretty, you know, she has pretty heavy hands herself. So I think that if you get a really big price on her at KO, I don't think anybody's playing that. Um, so let's just see what those two lines are. I know that the way to silver by KO is going to be the, the the higher price, but let's just see by how much. All right, so way to silver by KO plus 800. I mean, I really should try this. But it's such, listen, it's so much so much safer to play the way to silver by decision plus 300. I mean... I don't know. I don't know which one. You know, let's take a look. Let's take a look at her. We don't have to take a look at her game losses. We know that people are already pricing in that. Oh. You know, let's do it. Let's. I'm going to go to the other screen. and I'm going to just see if she's ever even had a knockout. Or when's the last time she had a knockout? So if she's in fact had a knockout recently... Sub, 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 sub. Literally all of her wins. Oh my God. All of her wins on her record are either are subs. So there is no way I'm doing it. Uh, so we'll just play her by decision plus the 300. And the other thing you could do if you wanted, just, just enough of this, enough of this nonsense. Player to win by submission in round one plus 600. Or even round two plus 800. That would actually be pretty, pretty chilled. <laughs> right? 
don't know. This one's really confusing me. I just feel as though if I bet anything with her by submission, I'm I'm just I'm just falling into the falling into the narrative. So we're gonna play the Silva. We're gonna play Mary Buena Silva to win by decision plus the three hundred. Um. So let's just review the awful clicks that we've made before we get into the main event. Malcolm Gordon, who in their right mind is betting Malcolm Gordon minus two hundred? I ask you, that would be me. Um, Jasmine Jeffs the vicious with the with the complete style advantage over Shil Cachuera. Uh, well, Cachuera it is. There's one other thing, by the way. You could play there if you want, and this has nothing to do with being contrary, and this is just. Uh, this is like a pick, okay? And I'm not doing it. So you know, what, what, a, what an amazing thing to be like someone that does content. You could say something and then if, and then don't do it. And then if it comes in, you could say that you gave it to people. What, what a country. But I have to be honest with you. I think that if you play Priscilla Cachuera and uh, Jasmine Juice Dubicious to go to a draw and get 50 to one, uh, I think that... Uh, I think that's good value because among other things, Priscilla Cachuera is prone to, is to, uh, to commit fouls. <laughs> uh, and if she can get a point taken away, that, that construct is very conducive to a draw. Um, if in fact, then she goes wins, you know, other rounds and stuff like that, obviously. But I think 50 to one is actually a good price. As a matter of fact, just as your extra bonus, maybe I'll do that. No, I can't. Once I start breaking the rules, I start breaking the rules. Anyway, uh, Sam Patterson, only plus 120 coming off of that ridiculous knockout against a Canadian in Canada. Who's doing this? I mean, really, who's playing this? I guess that would be me. Uh, Jillian Robertson is gonna, obviously going to take Pollyanna down. Pollyanna is all too happy to be off her back anyway, and then she's going to get submitted. I don't know why I'm doing this, but uh, plus 245. Um, Sirhi Saidi, uh, this is like contrarian of the contrarians you know it's the same it's the same line even though he won before um i think Tavares is getting a little bit too much uh too much love here so we're gonna take sidey minus the 180 sean woodson plus the 170 another one trying to somehow beat a canadian in canada by decision yikes uh garrett armfield again the against the high iq brad katona why would i bet anybody like that against somebody like that beats me uh, Evluev, uh, if he wins, I imagine it's going to be just a nice, boring decision that he's going to get booed or whatever. Uh, but hey, maybe not. Plus 550 inside the distance. Uh, Mark Andre Burial uh, by KO over Chris Curtis, who has the iron chin. Forgot to mention that. He can't knock Chris Curtis out because he has the iron chin. Well, maybe it happens once every four times. How about that? Mike Malott, round two. This is admittedly a terrible wager. Um, I, I just don't know what else to do here. Um, so plus 350 uh, for 180. I guess that makes sense. We should probably just X this out. We should we should really donate this to charity or something like that. Because But once I do this, it's going to win. We just know how it goes. We'll leave it. Uh, Buena Silva by decision, uh, plus 300 for all the reasons we just mentioned. And so now we're at the main event. We really should have to come up with something where we're getting at least 12 to 1. Now, normally, again, it's not as it's not really the same because I played some favorites, you know, and and I didn't bet everything so long. So I probably am not gonna be 0 for 11. But nonetheless, let's uh presume we are and let's see what we could bet in that last fight getting 12 to 1. I can tell you right now that the there's only a couple of things that are even going to be 12 to 1, uh, short of actually picking the actual round, which is probably going to end up doing. But let's analyze the fight. Uh, Strawn Strickland against uh, Dricus Duplessis. Uh, this is legitimately analyzed to the death. People have given every single take. There's literally no value at all in this fight. There just isn't. Uh, there are, people are sure Strickland's going to win. Sure, Duplessis is going to win. And I've heard different ways of both. I've heard Duplessis inside the distance. I've heard he could somehow get the cardio to, to, to make the decision. Although Strickland by decision is definitely the most likely outcome that the people have been talking about if the fact does go to a decision. So I think that if we had to really identify the binary outcomes people are looking for, 
it's probably going to be either Duplessis inside or Strickland by decision. So I promise you those are the things that we cannot bet, okay? Um, it's good because neither one of those are a plus 1,200 anyway. So if we're going to bet something, we can bet to Plessis inside the distance, but we're going to have to pick like an actual round. And if we're going to do that, we're going to have to go with him late because the idea is that Strickland has the better cardio and that he's going to put a pace on him and wear him, wear him out. So you play Duplessis late. I think that's where the, you know, the value is going to come or Duplessis by decision, which I, again, I don't think is going to be big enough. Or if we want, we could play Strickland Earl just to just, this is just a mismatch somehow. And he takes him out of there in the first or second round. So let's just scan the uh, scan the board here and see what we got. First, let's just see duplices by decision. Just prove that we can't do this. Uh, oh my God, it's almost enough. Duplices by decision plus nine hundred. I, I might have to do it. How how is this not a good thing to bet? Well, we might end up having to do it by default because there's nothing else here, right? Strickland, we said we can only bet him early. And nothing here is big enough, plus 600, plus 900. Duplessis late? Let's take a look at some of his. Duplessis, whoa. Well, that's by KO. We don't even know how this is going to happen. How about round props? Round props. Wow. So we could do this. We could play Duplessis in round where? Round four for 1,800? You know, we're going we're gonna to play Duplessis by decision and, and just hope that one of these bets comes in. I'm playing a minus 200 and a minus 180. And like sort of a pick them, isn't something going to win where I don't need to go? Don't make, need to make all of this up? And you know, we are going to break two rules. We're going to take Malat out. And then we only need to win. You know what? Let's just screw this. I hate this. Um, hopefully, again, you, you know, you. <laughs> The, the, this video has shown you more how to analyze this and how to actually execute this stuff. Anyway, uh, here we go. We're going to put all these bets in now. It's not going to let us now because we're on Zoom. But once we log off here, we're going to do this. Just to review, uh, Malcolm Gordon minus 205, Priscilla Cachuera plus 300, Sam Patterson plus 120, Polly Vianna, Polly Vianna plus 245, Sidey minus 180, Woodson plus 170, Armfield plus 170, Evluid by, by inside the distance. That's a lot. Uh, burial by TKO, Malat. I mean, the more I want to X this out, the more I'm just convinced it's going to win. Uh, Buena Silva, plus 300 by decision. And we know what's going to happen. She's going to get the KO. And Duplessis by decision, plus 900. I think that's just insane. So anyway, uh, place 12 bets, 2160. It won't let me until I log off here. So I will do that once I do. Uh, good luck, everybody.